Hey guys, so in this video I'm going to be showing you how to make this mammoth, which was actually not designed by me, this was designed by Zimmy. I think I need to zoom out a little bit so I can show him off better. Eh, this was a bad idea. Um, but yeah, it was designed by Zimmy Looms on Instagram. I'll leave her Instagram down in the description. Um, so you can go check her out. She does a lot of cool designs. Um, I know if you follow some of Olympus the Loomer's tutorials, you've probably heard of her because he does a lot of tutorials for her, but she's letting me make a tutorial for the mammoth, so thank you, Zimmy. Um, but yeah, so here's her design. I think it's super cute. Um, the only thing is, this is a little band heavy probably for my channel because all of my, most of my creations are like under 500 bands. Um, I believe the bank count for this guy... Shoot, what I do with the bank count? Uh, I believe the total for this guy is like 969. Um, you might want to check the description for the official count and everything. But he takes about 969 bands. But I do think he is totally worth it because he's so cute and he's so big. Um, I've made a couple bigger loom things and I always love them because they're so fun. I'm just used to my loom things being so small. But yeah, I absolutely love this design and I think it's totally worth the band count. Um... A tip I did notice that if you want to make the band count less heavy for one color is you could um, make your mammoth multiple colors. Uh, Saturn Looms on Instagram, she made a mammoth that was two colors um, and I thought it looked super cute. So today my mammoth is actually going to be three colors. This is one of his legs. I kind of started making his legs already, but yeah, so my mammoth today will be these three colors. So that's just a tip if you don't want it to be like really band heavy in one color, you can make it multiple colors. Um, also, Zimmy said I can make a tutorial for this guy who is like a baby mammoth, so it is exactly, basically, I basically got Zimmy's pattern and did exactly what she did, but smaller, because I just, I like smaller loom designs, but I don't know, I thought also thought it would be cute to post a photo with like him on his head, so that, that was the whole point of that, but <laughs> yeah, uh, anyways, I think we're gonna get started, as always, I'll have the pattern written in the description, uh, I think I'm gonna have it exactly written how Zimmy's ri written it, so if you're used to how I write it, it's not gonna be written like that, but um, it's going to be written like the usual way. Um, but yeah. I'll be explaining it though, how I usually explain it. So, yeah. But yeah, uh, I think that is it. So, yeah. So, to start, we're going to make all of his ears, uh, legs, tusks, and nose. And then we will... Oh, what's our air conditioning? I heard something. I was like, what the heck is that? It's the air condition. Um, spaced out. But yeah, so we'll be making all that first. And then we'll make his head and all that. But, yeah, I think that's it. So, we're going to get started. Um, as for hardness on this guy, he's actually not very hard. I also feel like I'm going to sneeze. Oh, okay, I'm not going to sneeze. But, he's not too hard to make. To me, he's actually pretty simple and a lot simpler than one of my designs. I did notice one thing, that if you're a beginner, it is kind of easier to make bigger designs than it is to make small designs. So, I do think this is a pretty good tutorial for beginners. It's not too complicated. Um... So, yeah, there's also a lot of repetitive rows in this guy. So, I think... You should be okay if you're kind of new. He just He's just band heavy. That's like the only downside to this guy because he's adorable. Um, but yeah, so now we'll get started. So of course you're going to need a hook. Um, I'm using my double-ended hook, but you can use any hook you want. Uh, you're going to need something to mark your rows. I'll be using a C-clip today. You can use anything to mark your rows. I, I know some people use stitch markers, um, C-clips, S-clips, paper clips, I don't know. Just something to mark your rows. Um, you're gonna want eyes if you have, if you want eyes. If not, you can use bands. You can just wrap a band four times around your hook and pull a band through, and it'll work the same thing, like the same way as an eye. But you're gonna want beads if you want for the eyes. Uh, of course, you're gonna need bands to make your mammoth and stuffing. But I think that is it. So we can get started now. So to start, I'm gonna show you making the legs. Like I said, I already made three legs, so I'm gonna show you how to make one, and then you're gonna want to pause, go off camera, and make three more. Well, you're not going to go off camera. You're just going to pause the video. I don't even know what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. So, to start, I'm just going to be putting these. I'm also trying to keep all the colors in order, so me picking up bands is going to take longer. Which is like, oops, probably wasn't a good idea, but I want my mammoth to be these colors. Yeah. Okay, so to start, we are going to do is we are going to wrap a band three times around our hook, so I feel like my light is too bright. I think I accidentally turned it up when I turned it off the other day. Are you going down? I don't know. Is that less bright? I think so. <laughs> so we're going to wrap a band three times around our hook, so one, two, three. 
And then we are going to pull a band through everything on our hook, put both ends back on our hook, and then you're going to push the back one over the front one. Like that. And then we're going to go back into the cap band. You're going to want to make sure you go through the whole cap band. You'll pull a band through just the cap band, so not this very last band. Put both ends back on your hook and then push the back loop over the front loop and then push the la loop from last time over as well. So now we're going to want to do the exact same thing we just did four more times so we have six loops in total. So you're going to want to go back into the cat band, pull a band through just the cat band, put both ends back on your hook and then push the back one over the front one and then push the loop from last time over as well. Yeah, so like I said, we're basically doing a magic ring with six stitches in it, so I need to do three more stitches. Um, if this part's confusing to you, I have a Luma Groovy Basics video where I explain all of this more slowly. But for the people who already know what I'm doing, I'm going to go... Uh, I'm going a little faster, I guess. But yeah, so we're going to go back into the cat band. We're going to pull a band through just the cat band. Both ends back on. You push the back one over the front one, and then you push the loop from last time over as well. Like I said... We will be doing this six times in total. I need to do it two more times. So that's one. And then go back in. I keep feeling like I'm going to sneeze. But I don't sneeze. Okay. So now I did it six times. So you're going to want to make sure you've done it six times. And to do that, we're just going to count the loops. So we're going to start by counting the one on our hook. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. And if you're using multiple colors, it's easier to tell which is the first loop because you obviously won't have two mango loops in a row. But sometimes this one might look like the first loop. But it's actually not. You can tell it's the, just the band we folded over. So just make sure you don't go into that. Um, but once you've made sure you have six loops, we're going to go into the first loop. So like I said, it should be this one. And you're going to pull the band through. Put both ends back on. And then push the back one over the front one. And then push the loop from the last time over as well. And then we'll be putting a C-clip on this band. Like that. So for the next row, we are going to be doing two single stitches and then an increase. So basically we're increasing every third this row. And, um, yeah. So we will be increasing every third. And I'm just picking up some bands. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to keep them all in order, and I keep confusing myself, so that's fun. Okay, I think we're good. Okay. So, like I said, we'll be increasing every third, so we'll do two single stitches. So this is one single stitch, so we'll go into the next loop. Two. And like I said, the third stitch we do is going to be an increase. So what an increase is, is basically, instead of just making one stitch in the loop, you go back in and you do a second stitch. And that's an increase. So basically, you just put two stitches in the one loop. And then once again, we'll be doing two single stitches. So you only put one stitch in the loop. So one, two. And then the next one will be an increase because it's the third one. So... You go in, you do one, and then two, like that. And then once we get to the C-clip, you'll make a stitch on the band that has a C-clip on it, and you will move it up. So after that last row, we should have eight stitches, or eight loops, I believe. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, like that. So now it gets a little bit repetitive. We're going to be doing four rows normal of basically just single stitches all the way around and I'm gonna stay on and do one row with you and then I'm gonna go off to do the rest of the rows so yeah just because it's very repetitive and I don't want this tutorial to be like super super long so I'm gonna try to go off camera as much as I can without with still making the tutorial you know and yeah yeah just I don't know. But like I said, we're going to be doing single stitches all the way around. So no increasing. We're just going to put one every, one stitch in every loop until we get back to the C-clip. And at the end of each of these four rows, you should still have eight loops. 
So we're just putting one stitch in every loop till we get back to the C-clip. I feel like I don't really need to explain this part because it's fairly simple. And like I said, we do four of these rows in total. So this is the first one. So one. And then once you get a C-clip, we'll just make a stitch on the band that has a C-clip on it. And we'll move it up. And like I said, after that last row, you should still have eight stitches. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's eight. I just counted wrong. Yeah, there's eight. Um, so yeah. So you're going to do that exact same thing we just did three more times. So you do um, four rows of single stitches in total. And then I'm, I'm going to come back to show you what to do next. Okay, so once you finish doing the four rows in total, your legs should be looking something like this. Um, I did one row with you on camera, so you should have only done three rows off camera. And like I said, after each of those four rows, you should still have eight stitches. So if you can't, you should have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then what we're going to do next is instead of going um, to close this off just so we can attach it to him later, we're just going to... Go into the next loop, we're going to pull a band through everything on our hook, and we're going to put the back one over the front one, and we're going to pull kind of tight. Not like super tight so we can undo it later. Like that. So like I said, you're going to want to have four legs. Um, I made one with you on camera, so you can just go back into the tutorial and make um, three more legs, or I have the pattern in the description and you can follow that. Or if you remember the steps, you can just make four more. But yeah, you're going to want to come back once you have four legs. But I'm going to show you how to do an ear next. So it's kind of the same thing. Not really, but I don't even know. What am I saying? Um, but yeah, so we're going to make an ear next. And I'm just going to pick up some bands really quickly. So I'm going to pause while I pick up bands because it always takes me a bit. Okay, so I think I know what we're doing. So we're going to start it the exact same way we started the legs. So we're going to be doing a magic ring with... Um, six stitches in it and yeah so once again we'll be wrapping a band three times around our hook so one two three and then we'll pull a band through everything on our hook put the back one over the front one we'll go back into the cap band pull another band through just the cap band put both ends back on your hook push the back one over the front one and then push the loop from last time over as well and like I said, we'll be doing six stitches in this cap band, so I have two, so I need to do four more. Uh, I'm kind of not explaining the magic ring as slowly or in depth, because we already did it once, so I'm hoping you got it. That's three. This is four. You know, I also kind of, um, this is like my second time filming this tutorial, because the first time I filmed it, I'm finishing up one of the legs, so I didn't get too far into the tutorial, but I was finishing up the leg, and I see a text pop up on my screen, and it says, it's for my dad basically asking if I can go into work, and I think it's funny, because I watched the footage back, and I literally see the text come up, and I'm just like, oh no. Like, I knew, I knew I was getting called into work. But yeah. So, now that we have six bands in our cat band, we can check by just counting around. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And like I said before, you're going to want to make sure you don't cat count this thing. It kind of looks like a loop, but it's not. Um, if you're doing different colors, you can obviously tell that. But sometimes it's harder when you're doing one color. And then once again, instead of going back into the cat band, we're going to go into this first loop. And then we'll just pull. We'll make a stitch on the loop. And then this is where we'll be putting our C-clip. So now for this next row, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be increasing everything. So every single stitch we do is going to be an increase. And basically what that means, uh, I kind of told you this when we did the leg, but basically you just put two stitches in each loop until we get back around. And I was just picking up some bands while I was talking. But yeah. So this one already has one stitch in it, but we're going we're gonna to want to go back in and do another one. So that way it has two stitches in it, and you can see that, and that's an increase. So we're going to be doing that all the way around. We're basically just putting two stitches in each loop until we get back to the C-clip. So you go in, you do one stitch, and then you go back in, and you do another stitch. 
And then we're going to do that again. So you go in, you do one, you go back in, you do another, like that. And we're just going to keep doing this all the way around. So it's pretty simple. Yeah, I do think it was funny though, because I was so set on planning that, like, filming the tutorial that way. That way I could put this tutorial out towards the start of the week. But then uh, I got called into work. Luckily, I haven't been called into work as much this week, so yeah, that's good. Uh, even though I am going to work in like half an hour, I'm planning to film the tutorial over two days instead of just one because I, I know I know this is gonna be a longer tutorial, but I have to go to work. But I need to get this done, so I'm like. Ugh. But I have like 40 minutes until I go to work, so I'm hoping to get majority of this done. Or at least get all the ears and legs and things. <laughs> but yeah. So we're just putting two stitches in each loop all the way around. Like that. And then once you get to the C-clip, you're just going to make a stitch on the band that has the C-clip on it. And then you're going to move the C-clip up onto that band. And then if you count around, you should have 12 loops. So one, you always start by counting the one on your hook. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, 12. And then what we're going to be doing for the next row, uh, the next two rows actually, is we're going to basically do the same thing we did on the legs, which is we're going to be doing two rows normal, which is basically all single stitches. So you just put one stitch in every single loop all the way around until you get back to the C-clip and you do that for two rows. So it's basically exactly like we did the legs. So you just put one stitch in every single loop until you get back to the C-clip. And at the end of each of these rows, you should still be at 12 loops. So we're not increasing or decreasing or anything. We're just putting one stitch in every loop until you get back to the C-clip. You know, I don't want to make it sound like, because I don't know if I was saying like, oh, I got to do this before work or anything. Like, it's not like I don't enjoy doing tutorials. I actually really love doing tutorials because whenever there's like pauses or anything, I can like talk to you guys or, you know, kind of just talk to myself. Um, <laughs> like, I really enjoy making tutorials. It's just, I always feel bad when I'm like behind and everyone wants to make my designs. And I really appreciate that you guys like my designs enough to want to make them. Even though this one isn't my design, this one's Zimmy's, but same concept because it's cute. Um, like, I guess you want, like, I just feel bad when I'm behind on tutorials, so I always, like, I feel like I need to make tutorials so you guys can make my things, because I know you want to, it has to be annoying, because you guys sometimes can't make my things and you see them, but I never write down patterns and I'm so horrible about all that, so, yeah, uh, that's why I kind of stress about tutorials sometimes, not because I don't like filming them or making them, it's more the, I feel bad because I'm so behind. <laughs> But yeah. Yup. Oh my god. Okay, once we get back to the C clip, we'll just move it up. And like I said, at the end of this row, you should still be at 12 loops, so if you can't run, you should be at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And we're going to be wanting to do that same thing we just did one more time. I'm going to go off camera to do this just so this tutorial isn't ridiculously long. So I'm going to go off camera, do one more row exactly like how we just did. And then I'll be back to show you what to do next. Okay, so after you did that second row around, you should still be at 12 loops. And it should be looking something like this. Yeah. But now we are going to be decreasing everything. So we're decreasing all the way around. Um... And I'll show you what a decrease is. So let's just make sure my camera's focused. So basically what a decrease is, is you're going to want to go, basically you're using up two loops. So you grab the front part of one loop and the back part of the next loop. Like that. And then you just pull a band through everything on your hook. Well, not everything, just the first two. This, this loop still stays on the back. And then you push the back one over the front one. And then you push that loop from last time over as well. So I'll show you that again one more time. So you have two loops. You want to put them together. So you grab the front part of one loop. The back part of the next loop. And you pull a band through these two. Both ends back on your hook. Push the back one over the front one. 
and then push the loop from last time over as well. And that's a decrease. So we're doing this all the way around. So every single stitch we're doing is a decrease. So, like that. <laughs> and then do that again. Make sure you don't skip any bands. Sometimes you almost do because it starts to get real tight. We're just decreasing all the way around. And then the very last decrease is going to land on the one that has the C-clip on it. So we're going to do that decrease. So front part of one loop, back part of one loop, make a stitch. And then you can just take the C-clip out at this point because we don't need it anymore. Because now all we're going to do... Uh, you should have six loops, by the way, at the end of this row. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Once you have six loops, or make sure you have six loops, um, you're just going to want to go into the next stitch and pull a band through everything on your hook, both ends back on, push the back one over the front one and pull it sort of tight. Well, this one actually I think I do pull tight. So yeah, pull it tight and then you can hide it inside. I had it inside. Well, I have them like this for now. Ears. I also realized <laughs> that Zimmy probably wanted me to attach the ears like this way, but I attached them like flat, like circles. Um, it's fine. But yeah, so you're going to want to make two ears. So you're going to want to do the exact same thing you did again. And then you're going to want to come back and I'll show you how to do the tusk. And yeah. Okay, so now we're going to make a tusk. Um... There we go, okay. And these are pretty simple, but we have to make two again. I already made one, so I'll show you how to make one, and then you just make another one. And basically... So, it starts basically almost the same as the leg and the ear, um, but this time we're doing a magic ring with only five stitches in it, so one less than before. Um, <laughs> uh, making sure I'm doing everything right. Um, so yeah, so we're going to be doing a magic ring, but this time with five stitches in it, so once again you'll wrap a band three times around your hook, you'll pull a band through the whole cat band, both ends back on, push the back one over the front one, and then go back in to the cat band, make another stitch, pull it through just the cat band, back one over the front one. I'm kind of going faster with the magic rings right now because we've already done two of them, so I assume you know what I'm doing. But we're going to be putting five stitches in this one. So. One, two. I don't know if my light's too bright with this white. Let me turn it down. Because it's getting kind of washed out. There we go. That's better. Okay. So. One, two. Okay. I have to do one more. Five. And then once you make sure you have five stitches, so once again you'll start by counting the one on your hook and then count backwards. So one, two, three, four, and five. Again, make sure you don't count that weird band that's like folded over. And then you'll go into the first loop and make a stitch. And then we'll be putting the seal up on this band. And then all we're gonna do is we are going to be doing four rows of single stitches all the way around this and you'll have five loops at the end of each row but it's just to make this tusk longer and yeah so you're going to want to do four rows and then come back and I'll show you what to do. I'm going to do the first row with you on camera and then I'm going to go off to do the other um, the other three rows so like I said we're doing four rows total just normal single stitches. So two. So we're just doing single stitches all the way around. And that just means we're putting one stitch in every loop until we get back to the C clip. And like I said, at the end of each of these rows, you should still be at five stitches. So once you get back to the C clip, once again, we'll just make a stitch on the band that has the C clip on it. And move it up. Like I said, you should still be at the five at the end of this each row. So one, two, three, four, five. Um, this is also kind of the hardest one to make because it is a little tight, but it looks it's fine. 
Anyways, I'm gonna go off camera to do the other three rows. Like I said, you should have four rows in total. So I'm gonna go off camera and do three, and then I'll come back and I'll show you how to close it off. Okay, so once you do four rows around well, the the magic ring, basically, um, it should be looking something like this, and you should still have five stitches. So if you can around, you should have one, two, three, four, five. It should be looking like this. Like I said, so if you stayed and did the one row with me, you would only have to do three more rows, so you have four rows in total. But after you do that, what you're going to do is you're just going to go into the next stitch. You're going to pull a band through everything, and then you're going to push the back one over the front one. And I usually pull it pretty tight, but not too tight, because I use this to tie it in later. And then we just take the C-clip out. And that's it. So like I said, you want to make two tusks. I already had one, so mine are done. And then... A lot of body parts we have made already for this mammoth, but all we have to do now is the trunk and then the tail, and we only have to make one of these, so yeah, so I'm gonna show you how to do that. So I guess we'll start with the tail. Um, oopsies. So we're gonna start with the tail, and this one does have some wrap bands on it, so on the end. Um, let me turn my light back up because we're not using white anymore. Oop. Light. <laughs> I think the light does kind of help, but yeah. So we're going to start with a tail. So I'm going to pause and pick up some bands because it takes me a while. Okay, um, so you know what? I thought the tusks were tight. I forgot. The tail is even tighter than the tusks. So these are probably like the two hardest bits of the mammoth just because of how tight it is. Um, so uh, my camera was focused. Focus. There we go. So once again, we'll start with a magic ring. So we'll wrap a band three times around our hook. Pull the band through and push the back one over the front one. The only thing is we are going to be adding fluff on these bands, so um, I'll usually kind of just carefully take this off my hook and then wrap a band twice around my hook, so like that. And then I'll just slide this band over. Oh, I probably should have made that the same color as the band. Hold up, hold up, hold up. <sighs> I should have made it purple. Oopsie. There we go. And then you're going to go back into the cat band. Well, before you go back into the cat band, you're going to want to wrap fluff for the next, um, the next band on your hook. So like that. So your hook should be looking like this. So you have the band from last time. Fluff band. And then you're going to go into the cat band. You're going to pull the band through just the cat band. Push the back one over the front one, and then you're going to push the fluff band over, and then the loop from last time. And this is a magic ring with three stitches in it, so we're going to go back in and we're going to do one more. So, we're going to make a stitch, and I forgot to put the fluff band on my hook. So if you ever forget to put the fluff band before you make the stitch, all you do is you remove that first loop. You wrap a band twice on your hook, put it back on. And then you'll push the fluff band over and then the loop from last time. Like that. So like I said, there's only three stitches in this cat band. Um, it's kind of hard to see, but because I use three colors, it's really easy for me because I just go one, two, three. But basically, once you've made sure you have three stitches, instead of going back into the cat band, once again, we'll be going into the first loop. And we're still using fluff band, so you're going to want to wrap a band on your hook first. And then go into the first loop. And then we're just going to make a stitch. Remember to push the fluff band. And then we'll be putting a C-clip on this loop. So that was it for that part. So for the next row, we're going to be increasing every other. So we're going to do one single and then an increase. And this first one's a single one, so the next one's going to be an increase. And it's kind of really hard to see because of how tight it is. But thankfully, because of my colors I used, I can tell that this mango band's the next loop. So once again, I'll wrap a fluff band on my hook first. Also, we are increasing every other. So this one was the first one, so I know the next one's going to be an increase. So we'll do an increase. So we'll go in and we'll make one stitch. Then we'll go back in and we'll do another stitch. Always remember to put your fluff band over or on your hook before you go back in. 
do another stitch. Oh my god, the fluff band came off. Like that. And then, like I said, we'll be doing one single, so the next one's just a single stitch, but we're still doing the fluff bands. And then you should be back at the C-clip, so that's it. That's all the increasing you do. We'll just make a stitch with on the band that has the C-clip on it. And that's also all the last of the fluff bands we do, so we're just going to go into the band that has the C-clip on it, make a stitch, and then move the C-clip up. And like I said, the one that we just did, the stitch we just did, we're no longer doing fluff or like bands that have wrap bands so that way they're fluffy, I guess. Yeah. Like that. So if you count around now, you should have four loops. So one, two, three, four. And now we're just gonna do four rows around these this around this to yeah, we're going to do four rows in total, and at the end of each of the four rows, you should still have four loops. So I'll stay on with you to do the first row, and then I'm going to go off to do the other three. So it's just like before, we're just doing one stitch in every loop until you get back to the C-clip. And these should be really quick, because it is tiny, but that also means it's tight. Um, yeah, this is definitely the harder one than the tusks, because the tusks, at least... There's five loops and there's no fluff, so, yeah. But just like that, I'm back at the C-clip. <laughs> so, I'm gonna go off to do the other three loops, I guess, loops. The other four, th three rows, oh my god. And then I'll come back and I'll show you what to do next, but yeah. Yep. Okay, so once you do four rows, your tail should look like this. So, like I said, I did four rows in total. I did one with you here on camera, and then I did three more, so... It should be looking something like this. So once you've done four rows, just like how we ended all the other ones, my camera was focused. Um, instead of going, well, no, what am I saying even? Um, we're going to go into the next loop, pull a band through everything on our hook, put the back one over the front one, and pull sort of tight. I usually undo these later and then use them to tie into the mammoth. And then we just take our C-clip out, and that's our tail. So we're almost done. The very last uh, extra piece we have to make before we make our whole mammoth is the trunk. So we're going to start making the trunk. Where's the pattern for the trunk? I've lost it. Okay, there it is. Um, and the trunk's really simple. So yeah, I'm just going to go pick up bands because I, I always try to put them in order and it takes me longer. So yeah. Okay, so like I said, we're going to do the trunk. The trunk is actually really, really simple. So once again, we're going to start all the way we did all the other things, and we're going to wrap a band three times around our hook. We're going to be doing a magic ring with six stitches in it, so exactly how we started the legs and the ears. So pull the band through, push the back one over the front one, go back into the cap band, pull the band through, the back one over the front one and we'll just be making six stitches in the cat band I'm not really explaining this part because of how many cat bands and stuff we've done already like magic rings and all that so I'm just doing it but yeah so we're doing six stitches in, in the cat band okay so once you think you want uh, to make sure you have six stitches, you're just going to count around. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And just a reminder that you always start by counting the one on your hook. And then once you've made sure you have six, six stitches, instead of going back to the cap band, you're going to go into the first loop. Pull the band through. Push the back one over the front one. And then we'll be putting our C-clip on this band. So the trunk is really simple because we don't increase or anything. We are just going to be doing eight rows uh, normal. So we're just going to go around this eight times. So I'm going to stay and do the first one with you. But we're doing eight rows normal. So like I said, that's just eight rows of all single stitches. So you just do one stitch in each loop until you get back to the C-clip. So we're just doing single stitches all the way around. 
that. And then once you get back to the C-clip, just make a stitch on the band that has a C-clip on it, and move it up. And then if you count around, you should still have six loops, so one, two, three, four, five, six. So like I said, you're going to want to do about eight rows in total. Um, I'm going to go off camera to do the other seven, just so those tutorials are ridiculously, so ridiculously long, and then I'll be back to show you what to do next. Okay, so after the eight rows, your trunk should be about this long. Um, if you're like me and you always somehow lose count of what row you're on, this is just like a little bit of a tip. So what you're going to want to do is you know that you have the cat band right here so that you're not going to count that first stitch. And then, like, you can really see it with the colors, but you're just going to count down. So you're going to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And that's how I know I did eight rows. But once, so once you've made sure you have done eight rows, also at the end of all of the eight rows, you should have still had six loops. So if you count around, you should still have six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And then all we're going to do is we're going to go into the next loop. We're going to pull a band through everything on our hook. Push the back one over the front one. Pull somewhat tight. And then remove the C-clip. So that is basically it for all of the mammoth extra parts. You should have four legs, two ears, a tail, and two tusks. And now we're actually going to get into making the whole mammoth body. And surprisingly, once you make the body, it all comes together super quickly. But for me, I'm going to go to work right now, and then I'll come back on another day to finish filming this. Of course, in the next couple seconds, it'll be another day for you guys, because I'm going to combine all the footage. But yeah, so I'll be back to show you how to do the mammoth head and all that. Okay, so I'm back and filming. It's technically the next day, but you guys don't care because it's all in one video. Anyways, so we just finished doing all the legs and things, so you should have all this. And once you have all this, um, camera just to focus. Um, we're gonna start making the head. To me, it goes faster from here on out. It always takes a bit to make like all the body parts, but now we're gonna just do the head and then the body and then attach everything and then we're done. Which is a little bit of stuff to do still, but um, to me it does feel like it goes faster from here on out. Okay. So to start, and also we're going to start at the very top of the head so there will be like wrap band because it's like fuzzy. Um, oops. Spilling stuff on my desk, I just saw something, but um, yeah. Okay, so I was just checking the pattern and picking up bands. But to start, we're going to do a cap ran- a uh, <laughs> cap- I don't even know what I was saying there. Uh, a cap band with six stitches in it, so exactly the same. We're going to wrap it three times. The only thing that's different than when we did the other cap bands is we are um, going to be adding bands to make it look fluffy. Like we did kind of on the tail. It's going to be the same thing. But, yeah. So we're going to start the cap band. And then I'm going to remove this one from my hook, and then, oops, I put the finger, right, yeah. <laughs> and then we're going to double a band on our hook, and then we're going to slide it onto this band to start adding the fluffy bands. Um, but from here on out, every time before we make a stitch, we're just going to wrap a band twice on our hook. And then we'll go back into the cap band, and we'll make the next stitch. Oh, yeah, um, Did I go through the whole cat band? Yeah. No. Hold up. I can't see if I got the whole cat band. Yeah, now I did. It was hard to see what I went through. But we're just gonna make a stitch. So after you push the back one over the front one is when you push the fluff band over and then the loop from last time. Um, so we're just making a cat band like we were before. The only thing that's different is we're adding these cat bands to make the head look fluffy. So always remember to double a band on your hook before you do the next stitch. I'm not really explaining this because we've done so many um, magic rings already that I assume you know what I'm doing because we're just doing a magic ring with six stitches in it. Um, 
Yeah. Let's one, two, three, four, and four. If you ever forget to put the fluff band on your hook first, once you push the back one over the front one, you can just remove that one from your hook, then double a band on your hook, and then push it over. But that's only if you forget. If you don't forget, then ignore what I just said. Um, I was just showing you how you can do it if you forget to add a band so you don't have to undo the stitch. But once you think you have six stitches, we're just going to count around to make sure. So once again, you always start by counting the one on your hook. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. So once you've made sure you have six bands, we're going to, of course, add our fluff band on first. And then we're going to go into the very first loop. And we're just going to make a stitch. And then we're going to put a C-clip on this one. Like that. And now we are just going to be increasing everything. So what that basically means is we'll just be putting two stitches in every loop all the way around until we get back to the C-clip. Um, we've already increased a couple times, so I hope you kind of know what I'm doing. So yeah. Yep. And we're still adding the um, fluff band, so just always make sure to double a band on your hook before you do another stitch. And like I said, we're increasing everything, so this first stitch we did, the one that has a sequel on it, we're going to go back into that loop and do another stitch before we move on to the next loop, just because we're increasing everything. Like that. Um. Also, try not to snag the fluff band. Sometimes it's hard, but it looks better if you don't snag them. But yeah, so we're just putting two stitches in each loop until we get back to the C clip. Yeah. Yep. And we're also still adding the fluffy bands on every single one. Well, you can kind of see what I'm doing. Yeah, I don't even know. I was just checking something. Um... I'm just picking up a few bands. So yeah, we're just increasing all the way around. I'm not really explaining this because we've already increased. Not like I, I already said that, you know. You know. Yeah. Work yesterday went well because um, I left after I finished filming the first part and I went to work. And it went, actually went really well. Uh, it wasn't super busy. Uh, I had some customers. They were all nice. Yeah, we did have one angry old man, though. I don't know why. He was just angry. <laughs> like... He brought his, like, grandchildren, was my guess, in for ice cream, and, like, they got ice cream, but, like, I tried talking to him because, like, he was paying everything, like, just telling him the total and all that, and he was, like, angry, and I was like, okay, buddy, but, yeah. In case you don't know, I work at an ice cream shop. <laughs> um, yeah, it's my dad's shop, but, uh, I have a job there. So, yeah. Yup. Heap. So I'm just still almost there. Oh my god, I'm getting so many people texting me right now. Literally, before I started filming this, nobody was texting me. All my friends weren't texting me back. So I was like, fine, I'm just going to go film. So if you don't hear from me for like three hours, that's why. Um, and the second I start filming, I have texts from everybody. That's fun. I say friends like I have multiple. <laughs> it's just one friend. <laughs> Okay, so once you finish the row, we increased everything, which is what we just did. Um, you should have 12 stitches, so if you can around, you should have 12. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So now for this um, next row, we're going to be doing... We're going to just single 
crochet as it says in the pattern all the way around so we're just gonna do one more normal around doing one stitch in every loop um, until we get back to the c-clip and we're still adding these fluff bands so yeah and after that at the end of this row you should still have 12 loops so that's what we're doing I'm gonna just stay on camera to do this row because it's only one row yeah I'm trying to think of other things I can talk about to fill the silence um, what else has been going on with me? Not much, actually. I am going to have to make an update video, I think, though, because I feel bad because I don't comment and stuff on as much as I would like to on people's Instagram posts. And it's because I'm insanely busy sometimes. And it's not like I'm ignoring anyone or I don't like appreciate when you guys make my things. It's just sometimes I get busy. And then I feel bad when I can't comment right away. And then I look at my posts saved and I have like 10 posts saved up where that I've forgot to comment on and yeah so I'm gonna have to probably make an update video because I don't think I'm gonna be on my phone I'll probably be on my phone less than usual from now on because um, I think I mentioned this when I went live a couple days ago on Instagram that I'm probably gonna apply to art schools and that means I have to make a portfolio and that's gonna take up a lot of my time so not like I'm going to slow down tutorials. I think I should still be able to do like tutorials and videos like normal. It's just, um, I don't reply to text as fast. Yeah. Yep. Oh, you know, I don't know. I just remembered this because at work yesterday, I was like, my voice was going because I was explaining so much in the tutorial. I guess I wasn't used to talking that much and then going to work. So my voice cracked while I was, um, talking to a customer, which was fun. I was like, ugh. <laughs> and they just looked at me and I'm like, yes, I'm literally like, I don't know what age does your voice crack at. <sighs> the things. Yeah. Almost back at the C-clip. It's taking me a second to go around because you have to wrap the band on first. But, yeah. Eh. Why does my camera always fall? Eep. I caught it, though. Okay, now we're almost back. There we go. So once you get to the band that has a C-clip on it, you're just going to make a stitch on the band that has a C-clip on it. And then you'll move the C-clip up onto the band that's on your hook. Like that. So after that last row, we should still have 12, 12, 12, what was I saying? 12 loops. So if you count around, you should have 12. And yeah. So for the next row, we're going to be doing... We're going to be increasing every other loop, so we're going to do a single stitch, and then an increase, and then we're going to keep doing that all the way around. Um, yeah. I'm just picking up some bands really quickly. Okay. So, yeah, we're going to do a single crochet, and then an increase. So... We already did one single one because the first one on our hook counts as a single one, so the next one's going to be an increase. So, do one, and then we go back in, do another stitch because that's an increase. <laughs> and then we're going to go into the next loop and we'll do a single stitch. And then the next loop will be an increase. And we just keep alternating doing this all the way around. Sometimes I feel like I talk nonsense when I'm not explaining, but you know what? It's fine. Y'all don't even need to know what I'm talking about anyways. <laughs> like, it's not super relevant if you're confused, I guess. Uh. Yeah. You know... Um, cause like the art portfolio thing, I think I am going to film some of it for this channel just for fun. Um, but yeah, I think I'm going to try to put out more tutorials though cause it is summer. Um, yeah, like I said, it'll probably just mean I'm not on my phone as much during the day cause whenever I paint and stuff, 
I usually just like toss my phone and I'm just like don't look at it for like hours at a time which is good because you know I'm doing other things but um it also means I don't reply to any text for hours at a time so yeah just from now until probably whenever I finish applying to art schools if I don't reply for a long time I'm not ignoring you I'm probably painting or something Also, because I think I, I let, like, I left, I leave the thing on on Instagram that lets people see when I'm on Instagram, um, just because, why not, you know, and I know I could turn it off, but, like, I'm too lazy, and I don't really mind that people can see when I'm active, but I have noticed that some people get annoyed when they can tell I'm online, and I don't reply to them, but sometimes, uh, I save photos on Instagram, and I'll copy them, just for practice purposes, and, like, for drawing and painting and things, and so if I don't reply to you, but it says I'm online, I'm probably just have my phone open. So I'm not ignoring you. I left my phone open and I just haven't replied to text yet. But I know that there was one girl who got mad at me and was like, hello, um, why aren't you answering kind of thing? And I was like, I'm sorry, I just leave my phone open. So that was fun. But yeah. Yep. Okay, almost back at the C clip. I'm close. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Okay, and then once you get to the band that has a C-clip on it, you'll just make a stitch on the band that has a C-clip on it. And then you'll move the C-clip up onto this band that's on your hook. So after that last row, you should be at 18 loops, so if you can around, you should have 18. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. So now is where it gets a little bit repetitive. Yeah. So we are going to be doing four rows normal, so we're just gonna go all the way around doing one um, stitch in every loop until we get back to the C-clip. And for each of these four rows at the end, you should still end up with, um, with 18 loops. I'm trying to remember the number we have. So you should still have 18 loops by the end of each of these rows. And also, this was the last row of fluff bands, so all these normal rows are gonna be just stitches, no, like, wrap bands on them. So, yeah. I'm picking up some bands, and then, yeah. And then we'll get started on this row. So I'm going to stay to do the first row with you, and then after that I'm going to leave to do the other, um, the other rows. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So like I said, we're just doing one row normal, so we're going to put one stitch in every loop until we get back to the C-clip, and then at the end of the row, we should be at um, 18 still. And like I said, we're not adding wrap bands anymore, so just stop adding them. I don't do anything like fancy to switch, I just stop adding them all together. And we'll just be putting one stitch in every loop until we get back to the C-clip. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, I am so behind on tutorials. <laughs> I always just think about this. I know I mentioned this earlier yesterday, I think. I'm just like, I really, I really want to try this summer to catch more or less up on some of them. So hopefully I can do it. We'll see. We'll see. I also just realized that I'm using three colors in 18, and three, like, you can divide, I noticed if you can divide, like, and it'll probably look fine. I'm just worried about the color placement, but I think it's fine. I was gonna make my mammoth only two colors, but then I was like, no, I want to do three, so, he's three colors. We're 
almost at the end. Okay. Okay. So once you get to the band that has the C clip on it, you make a stitch, you move your C clip up, and you should still be at 18 loops. So if you count around, you should have 18. Um, I'm not going to count because I know I have 18, but yeah. So I'm going to go off camera to do the other uh, three rows. So we have four rows in total. And then I'll come back and I'll show you how to close the head and then, yeah. Okay, so after the four rows, it should be looking something like this. It's pretty good. So what we're going to be doing next is we are going to be doing a single crochet and then a decrease. So basically we're decreasing every other stitch. Um, yeah. So yeah, that's pretty much it. I just, I really should have picked up bands before I started filming again, but I just remembered I didn't. So I'm picking up bands. Okay. So like I said, we're going to do, we're going to be decreasing every other, so this one is one, so the next one's going to be a decrease. And then we're going to do one single stitch, and then the next one's going to be a decrease. Um, and, if you forgot, <laughs> and if you forgot what a decrease was, what you're going to do is you're going to grab the front part of one loop, and then you're going to go to the next loop and you're going to grab the back part of that one. And then you'll make a stitch on this. And once again we'll do one single stitch. And then the next one will be a decrease. So we do front part of one loop, back part of the next one. And we just keep doing this all the way around. All the way around. Uh, yeah. Just a single... And then a decrease. And then a single. If I had more bands, the next one would be a decrease. <laughs> okay. And then we should be at the C clip. So once you get to the C clip, you'll just do a single stitch on the band that has a C clip on it and move it up. So after that last row, you should have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. You should be at 12 loops. So at this point, um, if you like attaching things while the creation is still open, you can attach the trunk ears and everything right now. But I personally just like attaching everything once it's closed. So I'm going to close this up and then I'm going to start attaching everything. But if you like attaching things while, every, while it's still open and all that, you're going to want to do that now. Um, I'm also going to stuff him right now. So, yeah. I just personally, like, I tried to attach it the first time I made it um, while it was still open and I didn't like it. So I'm just going to attach it when it's closed. And we'll stuff the head. Like that. I could put a little too much stuffing in. We'll just pull some out. Okay. So, like I said, if you're going to decrease at the... Not decrease. Um, attach everything at the end with me, then we will just continue closing this guy up. So, now we're going to be decreasing everything. So, every single stitch we do is going to be a decrease. Making sure I didn't miss anything. Okay. No, I'm, I'm right. So every single stitch we do is going to be a decrease. And we're just decreasing all the way around. Okay. Okay. 
And we're technically going to be doing a decrease on the one that has a C-clip on it, but we can remove the C-clip out at this point. Um, but if you count around after we just did all the decreasing, you should have six loops left. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And at this point in Zimmy's pattern, she just has to close off. So however you like to close it up, but I'm just going to decrease until I can't decrease anymore. So once again, I'm just decreasing everything until I can't decrease anymore. I know that people close off in different ways though. So at this point, if you do it a different way, you can close it off however you like. But I'm just going to pick up this last decrease and then I'm going to pull a band through everything on my hook. Both ends back on. Pull it tight. Well, you push the back one over the front one, then you pull it tight. So you just make a slip knot. And then you're just going to go up into your creation and then pull the tail in to hide the tail. And that is it. We have a head. So, like I said, um, I'm yawning, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, um, let me find the right spot on the pattern, hold up, okay, we're good. Um, so she attaches the, the ears and everything right now, so I guess we could do that. So you're going to want to pick whatever you want to be the front of your, um, mammoth, and you're going to attach all the ears in that. So like I said, I attached the ears like this last time. Um, it has occurred to me now that we're possibly supposed to squish it this way and attach the ears like this, but I'm going to attach them exactly the way I did last time. Um, so yeah, I honestly don't know if I attached the ears right. I even texted, um, Zimmy, like, how do I attach the ears? And she was like, you just attach them. And I was like, what? But I'm going to attach them like this, just because I kind of like how they look like this. But I'm just going to go through part of the mammoth and then part of the ear. Then I'll pull a band through both of these, and then slip knot. And then I'm just gonna go through another part of the ear. I usually like to see where it kind of falls, and then I'll go through part of the mammoth, part of the ear, pull a band through everything, and slip knot. Usually with the ears, like two sti two to three stitches will usually um, hold them on pretty well. I think I'm going to do one more at the top of the ear just so it kind of lays nicer. And you just attach the ears at the side of the head. I think it's best to attach the ears first. That way, because um, I think it's easier if you touch the ears first because then your face doesn't look crooked because you just put the face in the middle whereas I feel like if you put the face first then the ears might look crooked. Yeah. So like I said I just tied it about three times once in the middle once on the top and then once on the bottom and now the ears all attached. And I kind of leave the tails out until I'm done attaching everything so we'll just attach the other ear the exact same way we did this year. We'll just go to the other side of the head. So about right here. We'll just go through part of the ear as well. Tie a slip knot. And like I said, you're going to want to go towards the top of the head. Eep. You can attach the ears however you like. As long as they're on the sides of the head, they look okay. Hmm. That ear only needed two, two slip knots. Yeah. I don't know if I tied them too close together. Is this face too small? Should I have tied them more? Hmm. I should have maybe tied his ears more back. Um, hmm. That's not good. Uh, I'm going to go to adjust the ears off camera and then I'm going to come back and show you how to attach the rest. It's just hard to see where I'm attaching them on camera. So I'm just going to attach this ear a little bit more back. Okay, I just moved the ear back a little. You can see that's a little better now. But now I'm going to attach the trunk 
So this just goes right in the middle of the face. And like I said, I... It's blurry. Um, I left these kind of loose so I can undo them later. So I just undid it. And I'll just go to the very middle of the face. I'll just pull some of this band through. And use that band to slip knot it in. Let me make sure that's straight. So you're just gonna wanna put the trunk like dead center in the middle of the ears. Uh, I went off camera just to make sure my trunk is straight because it's always hard to tell when I'm attaching things correctly on camera, like just in the right spots, because it's hard to see. But basically I'm just gonna tie another slip knot at the bottom of the trunk. You usually have to put about three stitches in the trunk so it stays. Like I said, I wouldn't recommend tucking any of the tails in until you're completely happy with where it is. Uh, let me see. Oh yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah. So once you're happy with wherever it is, you'll just tuck in the tails. And now you're just going to want to attach the two tusks on either side of the nose. Oh, where's my other tusk? Oop, we lost the tusk. Where'd it go? <laughs> Hold up, let me find it. Okay, I found the other tusk. But we're just going to attach these right here. Um, we slip knotted it with a white band. We probably should have used, if it would focus, we probably should have used a different colored band. So I'm just going to take this one out. Then I'll grab that loop. Okay. And we'll just attach these on either side of the trunk, like I said. So this is exactly the same as how we attached the trunk, basically, just with uh, the tusk. So you do... It's, there's not much to explain, really, as to what I'm doing, because I'm just going through part of the mammoth and then part of the tusk. And then pulling a band through and slip knotting. It's pretty simple. There we go. And like I said, the bands you're pulling through, you're going to want them to be the color of your elephant so they hide better. I don't know why I said elephant. This is a mammoth. It's the color of your mammoth. Like that. That one actually t attached pretty easily. Um, I'm another tusk. Attach the other one. Um, yeah. Right here. Like that. We'll go through the top part. <laughs> Like I said, I'm just attaching. Not too much to explain. Once they just basically feel like they're kind of like really nice and in there, um, you don't need tiny more. Uh, I'm gonna go tuck in all the tails off camera just because it's easier for me. Okay, I tucked in all the tails. I also I just wanted to point out if you want your trunk to curve up, I usually just kind of bend it up and then it'll stay. So just bend them all up. So the very last thing we need to do is just attach the eyes. So I have my eyes on bands already. If you don't know how to put your eyes on bands, you can just use a piece of string and then thread it through the bead and the band and you'll eventually <laughs> end up with it on the band. But we'll just attach the eyes and I'm gonna put his eye right here. I'll go to the other side and I'll put an eye right here. I don't have an exact spot I put the eyes, I just kind of put them where they think they would look nice. Okay. 
Okay, this looks like the derpiest mammoth ever. <laughs> okay, maybe he doesn't look that derpy. I don't know what it is about this one, but he looks kind of interesting to me. I don't, I don't know. Hmm. No, he's cute. He looks cute. Cute mammoth. He has a very long nose. Okay, so now the life, of course, we need to start the body. He is bodiless. Um, so, you can obviously tell this is the front of your mammoth. So, we're going to want to go directly in the back here. And what we're basically going to do is we are going to do um, stitch into the back of the head here. So, I'm going to pick up some vans. I'm going to pause so I can pick up some vans really quick. Okay, I finished fixing... I finished picking up bands, as you can see. Um, oh man, I picked them up wrong, because all these bands are wrapped, so I usually would put two of each um, yeah. Um, I just put them in the wrong order on my finger. Um, but we're gonna do 15 stitches into the back of his head, so you're gonna want to make your circle fairly big. So I'm just gonna start... Uh, we'll start right here. And we're just gonna start stitching in, so... And you're gonna want to put wrap bands on your hook so that way you could start adding the fluff so once again just like when we did the top of the head before you do each stitch you're going to want to wrap a band twice on your hook and then you make a stitch and then you slide it on before you slide um, the loop from last time over and like I said, we're just going to stitch 15 times into the back of the head. I always kind of try to make like a really big circle, so that's what I'm going for yet again. It's just like a really big circle. Um, it's kind of hard to tell you exactly what I'm doing here, but you're basically just going to want to make a big circle. Because there's no exact way to do this. Um, so just big circle on the back of the head. How many stitches are we at? We're at four. Oh. Gosh. So it's five. Um, yeah. So we're just stitching into the back of the head. Like I said, you're going to want to make it fairly big. The first time I made this, um, I made the circle way too small and it was like so hard to, um, go back in and try to figure out where to put stitches. So I would just make it pretty big. There's no exact way to do this. You're just going to want to make like a really big circle. So you're just going to stitch in. Uh, and then let me count to see how many I'm at. So we're at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So I still need to do 5 more stitches, so it looks like I'm going to be about right. So if at any point you're wondering how many you're at, you would just count the one on your hook and then count backwards to see how many you're at. Looks like I'm actually actually did it perfectly this time, which is surprising. Oh god, it's all coming. Hold up. Okay, what basically happened was I just accidentally removed my hook and they all started unlooping, so I went to go save it. Um So yeah, I didn't mess up explaining to you guys, I just accidentally removed my hook a little too soon. Ugh. I need to pick up some more bands. Okay. Mm. Go 
go in like right here. I think I'm actually... Okay, how many are we at? Let's see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13... So we're going to need 14, 15. I'm just going to put these last two stitches really close together. It'll be fine. Team. Eh. And then 15. So you just want to count backwards to make sure you're at 15 stitches. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. And then what we're going to do is instead of going into the loop, you know that weird bit that I that we flip over that I always warn you against going into? We're going to make a stitch in that. So this weird little bit. It's basically the band you fold over. We're going to go into that we're going to make a stitch. And then we're going to go into the first loop and make a stitch. Like that. And then we'll be putting a C-clip on this band. So that is definitely the hardest part about starting um, the body. Now it gets super repetitive. So after you have, make sure you have 16 loops. Because after we did this weird thing on the end, you should be at 16. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5... 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Once you make sure you're at 16 loops, um, we're going to be doing 8. Yeah, 8 rounds of um, just single crochets, single stitches. Uh, 8 rounds normal, just going around. And at the end of each of the rows, you should still have... Um, I can't think of it. 16 loops. Um, I also just realized I didn't turn my light back on when I... Came back for filming. Oopsies. There's my light. Um, but yeah. So. Yeah. I'll stay with you to do the first row. And then you're going to have to do the other seven off camera. Um, off camera. Not watching this tutorial. I don't even know what I'm saying. But um. Yeah. So. We're just going to single crochet all the way around. Or single stitch. Do. Yeah. So, I'm just going to be doing that. And all of eight of these rows have wrapped bands on them. So, just always remember to wrap a band on your hook. It's because the whole um, body part of this is all fluffy. So, basically, all eight rows, you're adding fluff. But yeah, so, we're just going to stitch around this. The, the first couple rows are usually the hardest, but after that it gets easier. Yeah, we're just doing this all the way around. It's also okay if your circle looks a little wonky. I've noticed it kind of fixes itself once you start doing more rows and you can't really tell if your circle was weird at the start. So, it's fine. <laughs> Just something I noticed after I made my mammoth because I was so worried the first time because the circle I made for his head was so not a circle and then it just like, it looked fine. So, yeah. I don't know why I find it so hard to, like, it's taking me so long to do this row and I don't know why. Almost back at the C-clip. I'm focusing so hard right now because I'm trying not to mess up. I'm like, ah. Because it's a pain when your stitches come undone when you have wrap bands because then you got to rewrap all the bands and then put them on. So I'm being very careful not to accidentally remove anything from my hook because I do that quite a bit and usually it doesn't matter, but with wrap bands, it's a pain. So 
We're just making single stitches with wrap bands on them all the way around. And once you get to the seal loop, you'll just make a stitch on the man that has the seal loop on it and move it up. So that was one row. Like I said, you're going to want to do eight rows in total. So you, if you stayed into this row with me, you're going to want to do seven more. Um, I'm going to go do the other seven rows off camera. And then I'll come back and show you how it should look. And then we can finish our mammoth up. Yeah. Okay, so that took me a while. But I just did eight rows. Um, well, seven more rows if you stayed on and did the one with me. Uh, and it looks something like this. It's about this big. Uh, I lost count a couple times, so I'm just going to show you a quick tip in case you ever lose count. For me, it's kind of easy to count because I have the colors like this, so I can just count them. But I know this first one's a stitch in the head, so we don't get that one, and then I'll just count up. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. But honestly, if you probably do a row extra or a row less, it's not too big of a deal because it's just his body. Um, so yeah. So once you've done the eight rows, all we have left to do is close it up. Um, if you like attaching it while it's open, just like before, um, you're going to want to do that right now if you want to attach the legs and everything, but I personally just like attaching the legs once it's all closed up, so I'm going to close them up and then <laughs> attach the legs. So, yeah. So, I guess we'll get started on the next row. I'm just going to pick up some bands, which I always forget to do before I come back on camera. So, I'm going to pause and pick up some bands. Okay, I went and picked up bands, so now we're just going to continue. I also think I need to, like zoom out or something a little bit because we're getting kind of big also ignore the giant band mess that is currently my desk um, so what we're going to be doing this next row is we're going to be doing two single stitches and then a decrease so we're going to be decreasing every third basically so like I said we'll do two single stitches so this one's the first one the c-clip the one with the c-clip on it so this is two and then the very next one will be a decrease, so you grab the f wrap the <laughs> I forgot to wrap a band on my hook, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna be decreasing, so you grab the front part of one loop, back part of the next loop, and make a stitch. And then we'll be doing two single stitches, so one. two and then this third one will be a decrease we we'll just keep doing this all the way around so we do two single stitches and a decrease so one two and we're still adding wrap bands in case you couldn't tell and the next one will be a decrease One, I don't know what my family's talking about. I don't know if you guys can hear them so talking because sometimes you can, but uh, yeah, my family's discussing things in the living room. I don't know what. That's why I was kind of quiet. I was trying to hear what the heck they were talking about. This is one, next one's two. And then the last one will be a decrease and it has a C clip on it, but I'm just gonna decrease on it anyways. So the last one will be a decrease. And like I said, we're decreasing technically on the one that has a C clip on it, so you can just um move it up onto this band. So after that last row, you should have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. You should have 11 stitches around. So now at this point, you're going to want to stuff him. Um, you can take your hook out to stuff him. As long as you don't pull too tight on the C-clip, it, it should stay. But we're just going to stuff him. Yee. I thought I wasn't going to have enough stuffing, but I actually do. There we go. Like that. Yay. 
And now we're just going to be decreasing everything until it's closed. Yeah. So everything we can, we're going to do is going to be a decrease. And we're still adding the um, wrapped bands. So I'll tell you when I stop adding them, but basically we're just going to be decreasing everything until it's closed. kind of hard to decrease when it gets tight. Um, so technically this row you'll decrease to six stitches and after this row I would stop adding the wrapped bands just because it gets kind of tight so this will probably be the last row with wrapped bands. So we're just going to decrease everything until we get to the c-clip and then I'll count around and then we'll stop adding um, wrapped bands. And Uh, let me pick up some bands. So once you get to the band that has a sequel on it, I'm just going to take it out and then I'll count around and you should have six. So if you count around, you should have one, two, three, four, five, six. And once you have six, this is where we're going to stop adding the wrapped bands because it just gets too tight after this point. So we're going to stop adding them. And we're still going to be decreasing everything till it's closed. It's just we're going to stop um, doing the wrapped bands first. I don't even think I have the right colors on my hook. <laughs> like on my finger, they're all out of order. But it's okay. And then once you have the very last decrease... Ah. <laughs> I can't get it. Once you have the very last decrease up on your hook, you're just going to pull a band through everything on your hook. And then put the back one over the front one and pull tight. And then you just hide the tail into your mammoth. And you just kind of squish his butt. And ta-da! And now you can kind of guess what we're going to do. We're just going to be attaching all the legs the same way we did the trunks and, and stuff. So we're just going to be attaching all the legs and the tail. And then he's done. So yeah, we're pretty much almost done here. Uh, I'm going to attach the tail first just because the tail's easiest. Or easier, I guess. So I'll just go directly in the back. Pick a spot where I would like the tail. And then, like I said, we have these bands that we tied. You can just untie it and then pull it into the mammoth. You just tie this one in. Um, I don't think I tied this one twice. I think I just kind of let this one be kind of loose because it's funner like that. Like that. It's a tail. Um, so for the legs, you're just going to want to make sure you're putting them on the right spots. So uh, make sure he's not crooked when you're picking where the legs go because then the legs will be crooked. And like I said, you can undo this one that we used to like slip not off. You can undo it and then just go into part of the mammoth. And then use it to slip knot it in. Like that. And then this is exactly like the trunk where we'll just slip knot it into the mammoth uh, a couple of times just so that way they stay. And it's the same thing as before with the legs. I just kind of put them where I feel like the legs should go. Um, it depends whether the legs will need two or three uh, slip knot bands. It just depends sometimes. But usually I'll just turn them upside down. And we'll be slip knotting all the legs in. Slip knotting them in. 
I'm just staying on camera so you can see how I'm doing it in case you're confused, but you basically just go through part of the mammoth and then you'll go through like part of the leg, usually just one of those loops around. And then you'll pull a band through everything on your hook, put the back one over the front one and then just pull tight. And you would tuck these tails in. I'm just not tucking them in yet until I like where the legs are just because you don't want to tuck them in and then your leg be crooked and then you have to find where the heck your <laughs> slip knot band is. So it's easier if you just leave them all out um, until you like where all your legs are. Yeah. Kind of trying to show you. You know, I think I tied the other dude's legs in three times, like with three slip knots, but this one's only taking two. Like, he doesn't need a third. Well, he might. This one might. See, sometimes you can kind of tell that this one's a little flimsy, so then... Oh, is my camera focused? Like, it's a little flimsy, so then I'll just go... into... part, and then I'll go into part of the top of the leg. And just slip knot it. Okay. Only one more leg to go, and then I think we're done. And like I said, in case you've been wondering what I'm doing with these, I just undo this slip knot band that we used to close it, and I use it to tie it into the mammoth. And then we'll just tie a few more slip knots around. I'm trying to make sure I stay on camera. It's because I'm kind of looking around my camera. Uh, to make sure I like where I'm slip knotting everything in. Okay. But just like that, I think our mammoth is done. Uh, he has all his legs. Uh, I just realized I forgot to... I'll tuck all the slip knot bands in later just so that way this tutorial isn't ridiculously long. But basically that's it for your mammoth. After this, your mammoth is done. They're all done. So I hope your mammoth turned out okay. Uh, I tried my best to explain everything. Uh, I think I accidentally did a couple extra rows on this guy or I didn't do one on this guy. But it's not a big deal. He still looks cute. So if you make a mammoth, definitely sh share them with me and Zimmy on Instagram. Tag Zimmy for the design and tag me for the tutorial. Um, and thanks again, Zimmy, for letting me make a tutorial for the super cute mammoth. Um, I'm so happy I made this guy. He's super cute, and they're so big and fun. Um, so yeah, so subscribe to my channel if you want to see more tutorials. I know the tutorial that's probably coming out after this one will be a baby mammoth, so if you want to have a big mammoth and a baby mammoth, you can do that. Um, so yeah, subscribe so you know when that comes out. Um, I have more tutorials and designs and things on the way, so that's always fun. Um, but I think that is it for this tutorial. I don't really have much else to say. Uh, yeah. As always, I'll have Zimmy's Instagram. Well, not Zimmy's Instagram, is it always in the description, but I'll have my Instagram, as always. And then I'll have Zimmy's in the description this time, so you can go check her out, because she does amazing designs. So, yeah. Now I think that's it. So I'm going to go. Bye. <laughs>